the younger generation quits. Not everybody. So I got I to put that. People get their butt hurt. So not everybody. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong. You did this wrong. Or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, that's life, man. It wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as shit. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. A long story short, what I realized was no one was here to help me. And the feeling I had every morning, I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old. And the feeling I had every morning when I looked in the mirror was horrible. And I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And how I felt was a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared. And most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. No one looked at me and said, like this day and age, they'll, they'll take you in and they'll tell everybody, stop picking on this person. Back then, they didn't care. The KKK marched in our 4th of July parades. They had to stay 100 yards back, but they marched in it. That's how this town was. And my mom cared about me, but my dad took our soul. And she you know, did the best she could. I had to figure out I wasn't going to be a punk kid all my life. So the only way I could turn around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. And so what I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being, having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind through pain and suffering. Every day, we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what? For me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, roger that. How do you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. So the accountability mirror is something that I kind of came up with in high school. Like I said, I started shaving my head when I was 16 and I got caught up in trying to impress so many people because no one liked me. So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. 
you know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, dog, there's so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups. When you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I will reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So this mirror would always tell me, my, 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 my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note and I would fix it. I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. The mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor's set for 91. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that fucking factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those fucked up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. We all have these things about five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm, st you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, wh what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. You know what, and this is how I look at everything I do now in life, and this sums it up. I hate it jumping out of airplanes. I hate it shooting guns. I hate it the job as a Navy SEAL. But I did it because I wanted to change myself. Everything I do, I'm not really comfortable doing. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer.